Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So in an upcoming video I want to make a knurling tool as featured by Hemingway Kits. So you've probably seen a few YouTubers at the minute making this knurling tool and just because it's actually a really good tool to have in the home workshop. But the main thing to make this tool is you've got to put a lot of radiuses on the parts that make up all the different components of the tool and to do so at the minute I've got no repeatable way of doing that. So after checking out a video by Blondie Hacks I've seen a really cool way of making a little add-on to your rotary table to make it so you can locate on most features. So that's what we're going to be getting in today's video all done and dusted. A tool to add on to the rotary table to make doing radiuses super easy. For any of you unaware then of what a rotary table is, it's a piece of tooling that you can bolt on to a milling machine and it makes cutting radiuses really easy. So in a sense, it's a large circular table with a hand wheel and that hand wheel you can precisely turn it to a set degrees and make cutting radiuses really easy. The thing is with using one of these rotary tables, if you want to do multiple operations, you need a good way of fixturing your workpiece to the table so when you remove it and add the next piece on you can do the same each time. And Blondie Hack, she came up with a really cool way of doing this. It basically takes advantage of the Morse taper which is in here. So in my case I've got a Morse taper free in the centre here. And what she actually done is she made up a new Morse taper to include replaceable inserts that you can use to locate on the center of any holes that you want to add a radius to. So that's what we're going to be getting it to done in today's video. Ooh, that's locked in there pretty well. I basically need to get a Morse taper machined up with an indentation so I can put replaceable inserts into that machined Morse taper. So I think this is going to be the first thing we're going to make. So we're going to head over to the lathe, going to do a few measurements on this, check out in the machinist's handbook what degrees that has to be, and we'll machine one of these up. So before I carry out any machining today, I need to replicate this Morse taper free angle to my top slide. And to do so, I could have looked up in the machinery handbook and done some calculations to work it out, but I'm gonna try a fairly simple method. And basically to do so, I'm gonna line up a DTI gauge on here, sweep across it with my compound back and forth, and keep adjusting this very slightly until I get no change when I'm adjusting my compound for the length of this taper. To get the taper then to run parallel with my compound slide, I used a simple method of just tapping the side of the block and watching on a dial test indicator until I got that reading as close to zero or no movement as possible. So happy that now I've got the length of that taper dialed in relative parallel to the top slide. I can now put a piece of stock in the chuck and start turning that down. With our tail support now in place, we need to turn down this piece of stock until we hit the major diameter of the Morse taper. Currently this bar stock 25 millimeters and we're aiming for 23.9 so just got to take off 1.1 of this on this and then we can start with the taper With the OD now turned down to final major diameter, I can just try making the final surface finish of this part a little bit better by cleaning it up with a file. And with that cleaned up, I can do one final check to make sure I'm at final dimensions. And then from there, it's a case of cutting in the taper to match the existing taper I dialed in earlier on with the compound. So what I was mainly looking for is getting that taper running all the way to the end of the part to match the same length as the taper that I was replicating. Oh, 
And with that taper all finished, I just cleaned up the final surface finish again with a file. Happy that the test fit all fits really well into the rotary table. I can go ahead and part this off. With the taper tool then, now at a workable length, I can machine this down to its final overall length by putting it into the rotary table. So I had to be fairly delicate as I got closer and closer to the table, but the goal here was to machine this until it was pretty flush with the surface of the table. The main reason I'm doing this is because I don't want it to sit proud and interfere with any work that may be laying flat on the table. Most of the time this is going to be held up by parallels, but on the odd occasion I need the part perfectly flat to the table, this will be a perfect way of doing it. Right then, with the taper now all flush to the table, I can move over to the lathe and carry on with the next operations that need to be done on this bit of tooling. Confident then that this Morse Taper 5 attachment is going to run this part concentric in the lathe, I can start by facing off this part just to make sure it's perpendicular with the waves. After that I can start with the drilling procedure. So eventually I want this to have an M6 thread going fairly deep into the part. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to work on. So by centre drilling and then opening up that hole with a larger and larger drill bit I can achieve the 5mm hole which we need fairly deep into the part to tap this out at a later date to an M6. Once I've got that then, I'm going to work on the shallow 18mm hole, which is going to be the bed for our inserts. So going up in stages, in drill sizes, I can get this fairly close to final dimensions before coming in here with an end mill. So unfortunately the only end mill I had was an 18mm roughing end mill, which isn't going to give the best surface finish internally in there but it will give the flat bottom that I desire to make my inserts sit in there nice and flush. So with those holes all done now, I can go back in and tap the final part of this just to accept a bolt for anything that I want to bolt down to the taper. And then because I'm not an animal, I'm just going to break this sharp edge on here with a deburring tool. And final test fit fits in there lovely, nice and flush and we now have a tapped hole to accept an M6 bolt. With the hardest part of this smalling project done then, I can move over to making the various inserts I'm going to need to locate on my parts. So to begin with then, I turn down this stock to 18mm which hopefully should fit nice and snug into our taper. and maybe a slight bit sloppy, but not too bad a fit. From there, I can turn down the shouldered section which we're going to use to locate into the parts. So, because of the projects that I've got coming up, I'm going to do these at various sizes, ranging from 6 up to 12 mil. And these need to be fairly accurate as well. So, checking these with a digital caliper is a must. Once I'm happy that they're pretty accurate, I'm then going to go back in and just add a few light chamfers just to break those sharp edges. Not sure how necessary this next stage is, but I decided for any insert over 12mm, I was going to drill a through hole so I could bolt the insert down into the bit of tapered tooling. Again, not too sure how necessary that is, 
but I just thought I've got that drilled and tapped hole in the taper why not use it so then the final thing left to do on the inserts themselves was just part them off to an appropriate length in my case that was an overall length of 21mm which accounts for the depth of the hole in the taper and also a little bit to stick up to locate the actual part on and just like that we have an insert with the Morse taper inserted into the center of the rotary hole then we can change out our inserts fairly quick for whatever size center we need so a bit of a tight, tight fit going in here but from there you've got a center where you can put a piece of work on and reference it quite easily to the center of the spindle so I think what we'll do I'll quickly get a piece of work up here we'll line it all up get it dialed in with the DRO and then we'll cut ourselves a nice radius so I'm just going to quickly show you the basic setups and this thing in action so to begin with then you take the size of insert that you're going to want and you locate that straight into your ER32 holder or chuck, whatever you've got in here. Next thing we need to do, we need to locate this insert into this hole. So I'm going to lower that down and see where we're at. So I need to come across. So with the insert now inserted down into the spindle, we can zero out our DRO and we know we're going to be exactly on centre line for this table. Right, next operation after this really is getting a piece of stock up on the table. So for this I'm just going to use this scrap bit of stock that I've got laying around. And with that all in place you go down and you clamp it down like you normally would. So with the workpiece all now clamped and set up here, we can move the table out. So I'm aiming for a 12mm radius on this and the cutter's 18mm. So we're going to move across 19mm. Now if we went in straight at that, it's going to cut the final radius. So I'm going to come out a few more mil and then from there we're just going to slowly work our way in. And just like that, we have a nice radius curved part. There we have it then guys. The rotary table fixture is all completed. And in the end, I've gone with one Morse taper free insert tooling. And to start with, I've just got four different inserts. So I've got a six, eight, 10 and 12 mil. And anything after a 12 mil, I'm gonna to start to put a through hole in it so I can bolt that down into the taper itself but all the small ones I don't think it's really necessary. So that about sums up today's video. It's going to lead us really nicely into the next video where I'll be cracking on with the knurling tool that I've bought from Hemingway Kits. So that's going to be a cool upcoming set of videos on the channel. Sorry for the delays between videos. There's just been a lot going on between Christmas and into the new year. So just slowly getting back into things and hopefully you'll see those videos come more consistently like they used to. Other than that guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, see you in the next one.